Defensive line, young and strong and going to be good. Moorhead, the tight end, Jim Covert, Bortz, Hilgenberg at center. Becker on the right tackle is Keith Van Horn. First down. Bears at their own 23. Galt and Suey are flanked to the right, and Peyton is the line setback, and now Suey goes back with it. They go with two tight ends, Dunsmore on the right. Here we go with Peyton. A couple over the right side, stopped by Queen Board. Up front for the 49ers, pillars and board the defensive ends. Tui Asasopo, Manu Tui Asasopo, the nose tackle. The linebackers, Buns, Ellison, Reynolds, and Turner. But the 49ers do make an awful lot of changes. That secondary that was in 1981 so effective and still is. Lot, right, the cornerbacks, Williamson and White Hicks, the safety men. Reynolds is out. Mike Walter is in. That's on the 49er defense. Steve Fuller gets to Walter Payton, and Walter Payton is hit and knocked backwards by Ricky Ellison, the 49ers leading tackler. The 49ers have nine defensive linemen, John, and they get them all in the action. They get them all into the game as we see right now. Here come four of them right now. Let's watch this play now. You talk about a good athlete and a good player. Watch Keenan Turner on this tackle. Peyton starts to the inside, and then Turner is coming from the outside. Now, he has the outside control, and he just comes right down the line and doesn't let Peyton cut back. Dunsmore is split out wide to the right. Here comes McKinnon out of that direction. Bears go out of the shotgun, and they go to Steve Suey. Suey for a bear first down to the footy. Eric Wright on the stop, 15-yard gain for Steve Suey. Matt Suey, sorry. Now, I always like fullbacks like Matt Suey. I mean, I think he has the, the right name. You know, Matt Suey, fullback, Chicago Bears. You know, playing on grass here. I wouldn't be surprised. You know, there hasn't been much talk about the Chicago Bear offense, but what we did, we talked about Peyton and so on. But I wouldn't be surprised if this guy has a pretty big day today. Suey. Suey should have played at Arkansas. Cannon in motion. Fuller back to Peyton. Peyton stymied at the line of scrimmage. Knocked out of bounds by Eric Wright. You see how Walter Payton carries that ball? There's always a threat when Walter Payton goes on a sweep that he could pass the ball. And I bet you in this game we see at least once or twice where Payton will pass the ball. But he always has that ball up like you better not come up too quickly because we can get someone behind you and I'll throw it to him. Mike Ditka, the Bears head coach who really punishes that chewing gum during a game. Second down at 10. Payton is the lone setback. Two tight ends again. To the 49er 41, tripped up by Carlton Williamson. 19-yard pickup. That was the same play, Patty. A draw to the left side that Suey got his first down on. Watch center Jay Hilgenberg here on Manny to Hunter Tui Asasopo. You see me let him come in, turn him to the outside. Peyton ran right off that block. And if Carlton Williamson, number 27, didn't make that tackle there, that was six points. Final score has just been put up on the scoreboard here at Candlestick Park. The Dolphins 45, the Steelers 28. So the Dolphins will be in Palo Alto. And one of these two will, too. Here's Fuller back for his first throw. McKinnon, the intended receiver, incomplete. Ronnie Lott was the nearest defender. You know, that goes down as an incomplete pass, but I think that's what Steve Fuller needed. His first pass, he had time, he hit McKinnon right there. McKinnon didn't hold on, but that's the type of start that a quarterback like Steve Fuller needs. Last week, he was 9 out of 14, and when we talked to him up at Bear practice on Friday, he had to come away impressed, didn't he, John? Well, you know, I'm, I'm impressed with his leadership, you know, and his, his poise and his confidence and obviously his intelligence. Didn't play a down last year when he was with the Rams, but now, after two shoulder separations, they're looking at Super Bowl. Here's Peyton. He rambles down to about the 32 before Tui Asasopo knocks him down after a gain of eight. And the great 
great thing about a Walter Payton is you really don't have to block everyone. You can block about five or six, and he'll get by the other two or three. Watch him on this as he comes here. He has his off guard, off tackle, pulling in front. Look, he just makes the guy miss there. He makes him miss here, cuts back. You block half, and then he'll take on the other half of your defense. Well, when you ask around, you ask anybody, no matter who, you ask about Walter Payton, and the comment is a great back. He'd be on my all Madden team. I would hope so. See, there's the blocker in front of Payton, and Payton almost broke that one. Might be about a foot short of the first down. Ricky Ellison stopped him. Greg Landry in the middle of your picture, along with Mike Ditka. One thing I like about these guys is how they block for each other. Let's watch Matt Suey on the left of the screen. Let's watch his block here, his wham block for Walter Payton. You see him, he comes in motion right there. Now watch him, he's going to make a trap block right there, and then Payton is able to run off it. You know, these Bears, they not only run and catch a ball, Walter Payton throw it, but they also block like linemen. Talk about the 49ers finesse. You can see how short it is. Along with the 49ers finesse goes ferocity for Chicago because they play like they've always, as long as I can remember, played. A lot of intensity. That's a late word. They didn't know about that when they were the Monsters. And they're coming out with an impressive attitude today. They're the first fourth down. They're going for it. Fourth and a foot. And it it's almost got to be Peyton, and it's not Peyton. It's Fuller, and he gets the first down. Looked like Keena Turner of the 49ers might have jumped off sides, but they got the first down anyhow. That's right. That penalty will go against the 49ers. Keena Turner was up there at that weak side linebacker, and he just got a little anxious. He knew it was going to be a run on short yardage. He wanted to get penetration. Watch him. He's at the top Outside. right of the screen. You Number see him there? 58, Keena Turner, First he gets down. in the neutral zone. And he gets in the backfield. He got in a lot of things. And now the Bears are in the positive zone. First and 10 at the 49er, 25. The referee, by the way, is Jerry Seaman. The umpire is Gordon Wells. The head linesman is Jerry Bergman. Bill Reynolds, the line judge. The back judge, Al Jury. The side judge, Dave Perry. The field judge is Don Orr, and the alternate is Dick Dola. Bears the 49er 25. Kennedy in motion. Peyton, and he can throw it. Looks to throw. Tucks it away. Just barely gets back to the line of scrimmage if he does. Lawrence Pillars tripped him up. Well, we said that Walter Payton would be throwing, and then there's the first time. I think we'll see it at least one more time in short yardage. But he was trying to get the ball deep to Willie Galt. He was trying to get Galt deep in the end zone, and Galt ended up double double covered. Now watch Galt. He starts in the left. He's going to come across here to the right. Now watch the coverage. There's Eric Wright and Dwight Hicks. So they have him double. That's what Walter Payton saw. He saw, well, geez, they got two of them. I won't throw. I'll just run it. Second down and 10 as Payton struggled to get back to the line of scrimmage, and Fuller will throw, and we'll have time. Intended for Moorhead. He led him a little too much. Eric Wright on the coverage. Yep. Steve, Steve Fuller couldn't see it, but he had over here on the right side, he had Dennis McKinnon wide open. He got behind Ronnie Lott, and he was wide open down here. I'm sure he'll tell him about it. Again. There's Dan Bunch, number 57. You see what they do to a tight end? They start him on the, the linebackers on him. Moorhead got away from Buns, away from the second linebacker, and the ball was just out thrown. Second linebacker, number 99, was Mike Walder. Yes, so it's third down, and Fuller retreats into the shotgun, and Galt is split wide to the right. McKinnon goes in motion. 49ers look like a blitz, and then they back out of it. Fuller heads up the middle, is tripped up after a gain of two by Big Hands. Gary Big Hands Johnson. Thomas will come on. Everybody, I think, John, expects a low-scoring game. You know about the Bear defense, or at least you've heard about them. But the 49ers can play the good defense, too. You know, 
the other thing, everyone expects the offense. You know, they talk about the offense, the defense, all these guys. And it will usually boil down to someone like this, Bob Thomas, right. taking a field goal. Or Ray Worsen. In a game like this, it figures 41 yards away with Bashnagel holding. Thomas, plenty far enough, but wide right. No good. So the Bears, with an impressive opening drive, come away after keeping the ball for a while, but no points. It's had to score nothing, nothing. The Bears had the ball six minutes and 11 seconds after the opening kickoff and came away empty as Bob Thomas missed from 41 yards away. For the 49ers, Montana is the quarterback. Tyler and Craig, the runners, Clark and Solomon, the wide receivers. The offensive line has Francis, the tight end, Harris, Ayers, Quillen, Cross, and Funhorse. Montana goes to work. Quickly to Solomon, first down, 49ers. Look out for some early fireworks from these folks. They go to work in a hurry. You know, Joe Montana was saying, I said, what will be the first play tomorrow? He said, oh, it's just going to be a little hook to either Solomon or, or Dwight Clark. Here it is, Freddie Solomon. You know, that, that secondary is staying off. They're sitting off. Just boop, just run up, hit the hook in front of them. The Bears operate with four up front. Hartenstein, Hampton, Dent, and McMichael. And Solomon to work again to Clark. First down, and look out. Dwight Clark could be off to the races. Chased down by Singletary. Mike Singletary catches him at the pair 28. Dave Durson was the guy who missed the tackle. 38-yard pickup, and we'll take another look at that one. Well, Todd Bell, the normal strong safety, is starting at corner. And we see him on Dwight Clark. Dwight Clark just runs up the field, makes a little move. Right there, Todd Bell just misses the tackle. Clark, not having great speed, sees Mike Singletary, the middle linebacker, tries to give him a move, and Singletary makes the tackle. 49ers out in a hurry. Ronaldo Nehemiah is coming to the game, and they're going to work to the left to Tyler. At the line of scrimmage, maybe one. Richard Dent, number 95 for the Bears on the tackle. Injured the Bears bear. have an injured player down. It's Singletary. That could be a disastrous event for the Bears if they lose him. You know, Mike Singletary is one of those guys that just throws his body in a pile. He did it on that play. It was away from the ball. The ball went to the left, and Singletary went to his left and just dove right over a pile. Buddy Ryan. The defensive coordinator for the Bears over on the sideline. Finsick over to talk to him. Coach Ryan has done some remarkable job. Here's number 50. See Mike Singletary there? He just throws his body in there. He gets picked off, and he's still, he, well, he's just getting up just now. Number 50, the injured bear seems to be okay now. Selected to the Pro Bowl this year. Brian Cabral, number 54, has taken his place. Singletary, a very impressive player and a very impressive individual. Ronaldo Nehemiah, split wide to the right. A lot of speed there, too. Solomon is out to the left. Montana to work for Ronaldo. And Skeets is down to about the 17. A gain of 10. Fensick on the stop. You know, when you put Ronaldo Nehemiah in, the defensive back is always going to give a big cushion. Watch Mike Richardson, number 27. He's not going to let Nehemiah get deep. Of course, so what does Nehemiah do? Make you think you're going deep, and they just stop and come back in that hook. That looks like the game plan of the 49ers on this first few drives. You just throw in front of them, try and get them up, then go deep later. Underneath is the game, and Clark broke a big one. Here's Clark in motion now. And Montana goes back to throw. Walking it out to Clark, he bats it around and loses it. Would have been a spectacular catch. He couldn't come up with it. Dave Durson on the coverage, number 22. That's the change, as John Madden said a minute ago, in the Bear secondary, and that could be a very significant change. Well, you know, it does two things. It takes Todd Bell, a real physical player, out of that inside or that defensive middle and puts him out on the flanks where they can stay away from.
Drummond, and it puts Durison in there, a good player, but not as physical as Todd Bell. To the Bears, that strength down the middle has been so important all year as Montana that quickly. At the five, Mike Richardson, the defender, Solomon hangs on, it's a Niner first down, it'll be first and goal. You know, the most impressive thing about this drive in the 49ers back is the protection, the time that they're giving Joe Montana. Watch this offensive line here. We know what happened last week to the Redskins. They didn't give Theismann time. This time on this drive, no one has gotten close yet to the quarterback, Joe Montana. And the Bears, of course, over the year, have sacked so many quarterbacks so many times that it's highly unusual. And Montana goes right here, comes the Bear Blitz. Montana looks finds his receiver at the two again at Solomon. Montana, we said in the opening that Bill Walsh, or we talked about it in the pregame show, about those quick feet of Montana. And this is what Montana is going to do against the Blitz. We see the middle linebacker coming. We see Dorson, the safety, coming. Montana says, OK, I'll just run away from it. You blitz in the middle. I'll run out to the right and see who I can find out there. And there was Freddie Solomon, two-yard line. Second and goal at the two. Montana is five out of six. Solomon moves in motion. Montana buying some time. Throws it to a photographer. I think he threw that long to the photographer. That was a play pass that was supposed to it was supposed to fool the linebackers in secondary. Didn't fool anyone. Montana had no one open in the end zone. Knowing it's only second down, why force anything? Just throw it away. That one almost went in the ambulance, and Montana wants a timeout. He's a little concerned about the, the offensive lineup. It'll be third down and two when we come back. No score as yet, but the 49ers at the door. 49ers at the bare two-yard line. Third down. This is their first third down of this drive and the ninth play of this drive. All but one has been a pass. settle for a worshing. You know, you hate to have to audibleize down on the goal line. That's what Joe Montana was doing, that red 73. Watch him here. He's audibleized. Now, sometimes that takes a lot of concentration off the center and the quarterback, and sometimes it also changes your snap count. And you really don't like to audibleize, period. But when I was coach, I used to hate to have to audibleize on the goal line. There ought to be something you would think that would work against everything. Especially when you get down there. 21 yards for Wershing with Montana holding. Wershing hits. And the 49ers break on top 3-0. Boy, is that ever a familiar story. San Francisco scores first, and they lead early. Been that way almost all year. This is the NFC Championship game. The 49ers do lead the Bears 3-0 with 421 left in the first quarter. Whoever wins will be on the West Coast to play the Miami Dolphins, who won the AFC earlier today. Ray Worshing to kick off. Willie Golf and Dennis Gentry back deep for the Bears. Ball sails over both of them and flies out of the end zone. And they'll bring it out to the 20 and start to operate from there. Here's the drive by the 49ers. Worshing finished it off with that 21-yard field goal. 10 plays, 73 yards. They kept the ball 4 minutes, 28 seconds. All but one of those plays, if you forget about the fumble, was a pass. And I think that they established something else. One, that they are going to pass, that that's going to be their game plan to attack the Bears. And number two, that this offensive line, at least early in the game, can pass protect this 46 defense. 49er offensive line is excellent. No question about that as you look at Steve Fuller. Bears 
from the 20. Peyton and Suey and Moorhead in motion. And Suey gets the handoff. And Suey tries to get to the right side and gets nothing. Ricky Ellison. One of the 49er defenders. The other was Dwayne Board. You get the feeling with all the talk, John, about the Bear defense that the 49er defense was neglected or not given the notoriety. I think that's been true, but the players said that it didn't bother them. You know, that they kind of liked that. That's what Ricky Ellison was saying yesterday, number 50, the inside linebacker of the 49ers. He said, you know, that's happened, but that's not bad. Let them not respect us. But then you can come out and show them, and everyone says, whoa, this guy's pretty good. Second and 10, and be careful of this down right here. Intercepted by Dwight Hicks. He got the rebound. It's 49ers. Willie Crawford had it bounce off his hand. I just had a feeling. You sure did, but I'll tell you, that's the second ball that Steve Fuller has thrown. It should have been caught. Willie Crawford has to catch that ball. That's right in the hands. There's no reason that that ball is not caught. Dwight Hicks makes a pretty good interception if that ball didn't touch the ground. I don't know. If you've got what it takes and really care, there's a special kind of life you'll want to share. Serving your country is a special call. It's good for you, it's good for all. Not all who drive fit the bill. It calls for brains, it calls for skill in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. High tech and the services go hand in hand. It's a whole new world. You're in demand in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. You'll move up, you'll feel proud, you'll stand out above the crowd in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. But most of all, you'll earn the respect of the people and country you're there to protect in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. It's a great place to start. Who has vibrant greens, brilliant blues, the crispest reds, an incredibly lifelike sound? Only RCA. Introducing full-spectrum television, the only full-stereo TV to process 100% of the audio-video signal. All the color, all the sound, all the time. Bringing the magic of life right into your living room. Full-stereo, full-spectrum television, only from RCA. Technology that excites the senses. Well, the first big play, the first big break of the game goes to the 49ers. Dwight Hicks, this ball hit the ground. This ball should not have been an interception. Watch this, it hits the ground. See right there, it's on the ground. Dwight Hicks did a good job of covering it up, but that should have been an incomplete pass. They gave it to Hicks and said it was an interception. The first big break of this game. Well, if you're a veteran, as is Dwight Hicks, maybe you know how to cover those things. 49ers at the Bear 40, just inside the 40. Montana, right to work. Spence's first down inside the 30. Single Terry back in the game makes the stop. But a gain of 12. Hit him underneath, John. Well, that's what they're going to do. You know, they really had two weeks to prepare for this Bear defense, and it looks like they have it figured out pretty well. They started going to the outside receivers, then they go to the tight end, Russ Francis. He just works underneath the linebackers. Big target in there, six foot six. Montana finds him. Quap just gives him the ball for the first down. White parks with that wide to the right. Solomon to the left. There's the 27. The handoff is to Tyler. Tyler down the right sideline. Tyler out of bounds at the two. Number six, number 26 rips off a gain of 25. Solomon was wide open early on that play, and I think 
gimme, and he threw it like a gimme, and Fensick didn't gimme. Sometimes you get too fancy. Suey in motion and Fuller to work. Fired to Moorhead. He's out to about the 26-27 before Jack Reynolds. That's the first completion of the day by Steve Fuller's Gary Fensick. Five interceptions on the year. Number 45. He's quite an impressive individual, too. I tell you, he's an impressive. He's a bright guy. He's from Yale, but he'll hit you. you know, he's all over that field. And that's all he's looking for is a good hit. <laughs> I think he was just going to try and find some hit there in the end zone against Solomon, and he found an interception. He is not allergic to collisions. Neither is Jack Reynolds. Second down. Peyton over the left side. As only he can do it. Lawrence Pillars tripped him up. A bear first down. I think that was a good move by the Bears, throwing on first down. You know, every, every, everyone knows that the biggest and most important part is this guy right here, Walter Payton. But you can't just give him the ball every play. So throwing on first down, mixing the plays up, then when you really need it, there's going to be a lot left for Payton. One thing, when you talk to Bill Walsh about Payton, you know, if people talk about his moves and his jumping ability and he can throw it, the thing that Bill Walsh always brought out as we talked to him was stamina. And he's playing as hard or harder in the fourth quarter as he does the start of the game. Here's Peyton. Peyton ricochets off Ronnie Lott. Not many people do that. Stover finally got him down. Ronnie Lott made a heck of a play on that Keith Van Horn, number 78, the right tackle. Watch him pull out here, 78. Now he's going to come right here on Ronnie Lott. Ronnie Lott gets off Van Horn's block right there, you see him? And he puts a tattoo on Peyton. And Peyton just kind of runs right through the tattoo. Tattoos are not usually easy to get rid of. Ronnie Lott was saying the other day, he said, I want to play as hard as I can against this guy it's because he's the greatest back in football, and I want him to respect me, too, as much as I do him. Second and one. Fuller to Peyton. Peyton has a bear first down at about the 44. Ricky Ellison, Carlton Williamson on the bottom of the pile. Nine carries, 47 yards for Peyton. Should be the end of quarter number one. It's been an eventful quarter. The 49ers lead it 3 nothing. Styling, heart pounding performance. This is the performance Lebar of GTS. Zero to 50 turbo GTS beats BMW 520AD. In the slalom, GTS Premium is first again. Performance seats, available leather fitted cabin, advanced electronics, and a five year 50,000 mile protection plan. The Baron GTS, created to outperform Europe's best. It does, I assure you. <laughs> this camping trip was a good idea. Yeah, it sure is relaxing. Peaceful. Groovy. Groovy. Kind of dark, though. Man, I'm getting thirsty. Yeah, let's have another light beer for Miller. Light trash Billy! What was that? The creature. What creature? Well, legend has it that a horrible thing stalks these woods. Oh, Mickey! It comes out when the moon is full. What does this creature look like? It walks on two legs, but it isn't human. It's got big eyes and bulls shouting. Oh. It's the creature! Hey, guys, guys, hey, guys, where you going? Hey, guys, where are the marshmallows? Like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Man, did you see that thing? Suck At Candlestick Park, the home of the 49ers, the hosts are leading the Bears 3-0. Steve Fuller brings the Bears out of the huddle. First and 10 from their own 44. Suey and Peyton. This is Dennis McKinnon in motion. Throw. Goes quickly to Moorhead. 
who's close to midfield, gets hammered in the head, tackled by Ricky Ellison, was hit hard by Jim Stuckey, gain of six. The Bears offensive center, Jay Hilgenberg, just limped off. Yeah, I was just going to say, now that is always a, a very difficult thing because your center works all week with a starting quarterback, and the backup center really doesn't get that much work. Andrews is the backup center, number 60. He's a rookie from Louisville. And he's got to work against three different middle backers. Here's Fuller. There's one of the middle backers, Michael Carter, number 95, who started in front of Andrews, and he comes up with Fuller in his arms. There's two rookies going against each other, Michael Carter, Tom Andrews, Watch Anders, it's his first play. Now that really wasn't his man. He had to come off on the blitz. He missed Hacksaw, and then we see what happened. Kurt Becker, the right guard, came down on Carter. So Carter got off of Becker and made the play after Hacksaw on a blitz went by Andrews. If that name sounds familiar, Carter, it's because you remember the Olympic Games, and he was a, what, a silver medalist, John? Right, shot putter. Third down. Kennan moves in motion again, and Fuller goes out of the shotgun. Gets away from everybody. Almost everybody. They say his arm was going forward, so it is not a fumble. Big hands, Johnson was the man applying the pressure, and the Bears will have to punt. Well, the first guy that gets in here is Jeff Stover, number 72. He's going to end up right at Fuller's feet right there. That's the tap. Then he starts to run, then he gets the bap, and then the sack. Here is Dave Finzer, who hurt his knee last week against Washington, making a tackle after kicking off, but he is in the punt. He hasn't kicked since Wednesday. Dana McLemore is number 43, back to the 49. Finzer. Good kick. Wow. Rocket. McLemore takes back to his spot. Still on his feet to the 30. Andrews finally knocked him down. A 55-yard punt. 25-yard return, so they get 30. 49ers take it over first and 10 at their own 30. Talk about tough things that players have to do. The punt return is really something. Because he spent he can't spend a lot of time running right and left. He has to get that ball right up the field. Look him just bounce off tacklers, one there, another one there, and he finally gets it out to the 30-yard line. That's 30 tough yards. And 30 very valuable yards to the 49ers. They lead 3-0. College basketball doubleheader coming your way next Saturday on CBS Sports. In the first game, second-ranked Duke will host Washington. And most of you will see 10th-ranked DePaul take on Houston, while those in the South will see Kentucky against Alabama. Wildcats seem to have turned things around. That's next Saturday, beginning at noon, Eastern Time, right here on CBS Sports. 49er ball. Their own 30. Francis in motion this time. Quick to Solomon. Another Niner first down. Mike Richardson, the defender. 13-yard game, Montana. Firing quickly. And the Bears haven't been able to get close to him. Well, that's what uh, Bill Walsh was saying the other day. He said what we have to do is Joe has to get rid of the ball. Even if we have to, to shorten our routes, shorten his drop back. We'll see it's one, two, three. He usually takes a five-step drop. Now there he's taking a, a quicker three-step drop and crap, just getting rid of the ball sooner. First down. Great play to Roger Craig and McMichael is there quickly along with Hampton, loss of about four. This is, of course, the NFL's number one defense, the Chicago Bears, against the second-ranked offense, Miami's number one. Today, in total offense, the 49ers have picked up 122 yards, the Bears 69, the 49ers, for all that number, have only three points, and that's the score, three nothing. Ronaldo V. Myers, good fly to the left. And got back. Montana. Ooh. Solomon. Durs 
Jackson almost came up with an interception. Mike Richardson finally knocked him out of bounds, but Solomon came up with a with a handsome catch. But how about the throw at Joe Montana getting the ball in there? We're going to see Richardson's coming off. Solomon just works to the outside. Here comes Dewerson. The ball gets right past Dewerson and into Solomon's hands. That's a zipped thrown ball. Where you just go zip. Five zips for Solomon for 54 yards. Wilson has taken his place. Here's Montana penalty marker down as Roger Craig comes out of bounds after catching the ball for a gain of about four. But there's a flag down. Oh, Wendell Tyler got a pretty good block over here in the sideline on Mike Singletary. Against the Bears. It's, it's Wilson out here. Otis Wilson is the is the linebacker Outside, who jumps off side. Number 55, defense. Still first starts down. here. They have the two linebackers up there. You see Wilson, the outside guy? He again got into that neutral zone. They're just anxious on defense. He was coming on a blitz that time. He wanted to get there to Montana because they haven't gotten close to him yet. That was the famed 46 defense that has given so many people so many fits and so many sleepless nights. Clark is split wide to the left. Wilson is out to the right. Montana pitches back to Little Tyler. He's chasing down. Tyler. Down by Al Harris and Mike Singletary. You talk about a big linebacker. That Al Harris is about six foot six, over 250 pounds, number 90 there. That's a big linebacker. Now in that play, Roger Craig had to block him. That's what you call a mismatch. Talking about a six foot guy blocking a six foot five guy. Al Harris just kind of stood there, boom, took him off, tackled Tyler. There's Jay Hilgenberg over on the sideline. Remember he was he was injured earlier, but we are told he'll be back in the contest when the Bears get the ball back. What a pinched nerve in his neck. Second down, five from the Bears 40. Montana gives to Tyler. Tyler with some room is finally tripped up by Hartenstein, but he got a 49er first down, a gain of eight. I think, you know, Richard Denton had a big, big game last week. So far in this first half, we haven't heard his name yet. They're handling him pretty well. Only when you said he was blocked. It's down. The option play by Solomon. Back to Craig. How'd he get the ball? This is one of the wrinkles that the 49ers had ready for the bear. Solomon at quarterback running the option. Freddie Solomon ends up at quarterback.
Jerry Seaman. Illegal motion, number 87, offense, penalty decline. Clark, Second down. It is 87. Bears decline. Montana's 9 out of 13. It's second and 10 from the Bear 18-yard line. Is Buddy Ryan, the Bears defensive coordinator, is the guy to put this same 46 defense in, and he's the guy that runs the whole defense for the Chicago Bear team. Montana, chased by Durson. It's limited to Wilson out of bounds. It'll be first and goal for the 49ers at the three. Two number on Wendell Tyler. Tyler's getting up. Look, where did that guy come from? Richard Dent hit Tyler about the same time that he got the ball, and as you said, Tyler's lucky he didn't fumble that ball. Watch Dent on the penetration right there. He just goes right inside of someone. Tyler just gets him. The, holy moly! Richard Dent from Tennessee State. Really a quick and a very very strongly developing player. He's going to be great. Montana has the ball patted away. He was looking at Dwight Clark. And we'll have a 14 for the 49ers on the field in a moment. Ray Worshing. And Hampton knocked it down. It was both Hampton and Dent were, were given the rush on that side. And it looks like Hampton knocks it down. Dent is to his right. Hampton is number 99. He starts out there to his pass rush. Just get that big left hand up and knocks the ball down. The 49ers have been at the door a lot. But don't seem to be coming away with any sales. Montana holding from 22 yards out for working. And it's good. And it's 6-0. Left to play in the first half, and the 49ers lead the Bears 6 nothing. Last year, car makers spent a record $1 billion in advertising just to tell you how wonderful their cars are. Fortunately, there's a more objective opinion, car owners. According to a recent survey, of all cars in America, import or domestic, Subaru ranks second only to Mercedes in customer satisfaction. And that's the kind of advertising money can't buy. Subaru, inexpensive and built to stay that way. I have taken on many fighters. And Here's the play we were talking about where Guy McIntyre, backup guard, is playing halfback. Now he's going to lead block on Gary Fencing. What would you think if you're the safety and you look up and you see a guy coming at you and you look at him, he's a 260-pound he's a guard. Watch McIntyre come and Fencing says, well, they told me I was supposed to take on a, a running back out here. Where'd that guard come from? Tell you what, if Singletary doesn't come from the inside, that's a dance in the end zone because they really had an alley. Roger Craig, by the way, number 33, just went to the 49er locker room. Yet he didn't appear to be injured to me, at least, John. I didn't see anything, did you? No. Washington's kickoff. Dennis Gentry at the seven. Here come the flags, as so often happens. 
happen. Kickoff returns, punt returns. Ricky Ellison was the man on the bottom of the pile. We just got a report, Pat, that Roger Craig had his hand stepped on, and so they're probably taking him into the locker room to x-ray the hand. San Francisco, I think the holding penalty indication has been given already. This is Jerry Seaman. San Francisco is at a first and goal from the five and from the four. Holding number 54, receiving team, during the return, first down. And all they've gotten out of those first and goals is two field goals. Here's number 54, Brian Cabral. Now that's a good hold. If you're going to hold, put both arms around him, wrap him, take him to the turf. I mean, that's a good one. Don't get one of those little touching on the back. I mean, that's what Brian Cabral said. Hold him. Heck, I'll tackle him. Might as well be serious about it. First down, Bears. Their own 14, Steve Fuller, the quarterback. Calvin Thomas was in there. That's a lateral to Peyton. Peyton to about the nine. Ricky Ellison and Jack Reynolds converged. There's Buddy Ryan talking to his defensive unit. You know, we were talking to Gary Fensick the other night, and he said that Buddy Ryan takes about the first quarter to figure out what they're doing, and then he makes his game plan. And basically what it is, if they keep the running backs in, he doesn't blitz, he drops off. If they release the running backs on pass patterns, then he blitzes. Sounds simple, but a lot of people haven't been able to figure it out all year long. Fuller, drop play to Thomas. Calvin Thomas to about the 12. It'll be third and long, extremely long. Well, the first two times the Bears ran that play, the first time was to Matt Suey, and they ran the same play to Walter Payton, and they had big yardage on it. That time, Gary Big Hands Johnson was in. He just stayed right on the line of scrimmage. There was no hole for the draw play. Now you have two ex-San Diego Chargers on the right side of the 49er defensive line. Gary Johnson, 97, and Fred Dean, 74. And they can rush the passer. And we have Jim Covert and Mark Ports blocking him. And Fuller operating out of the shotgun. He starts Warhead in motion. The handoff is to Payton. Payton will not get the first down. He gets to about the 18. There's a little scuffle between Lott and Payton. Between board. Snow. No, none. I want Schmidson at that meeting. Snow or no snow. Boulder? I want Schmidson at that meeting. Snow or no snow. Beetlemeyer? You know who to call when you have to get a package there. But what do you do when you have to get a person there? No matter how crazy the weather, you drive a Subaru. Or you may get stuck with something else. Being there. That's it's worked for a long time, can you? <laughs> you really can't. Unless you're up here with us. First and ten for the 49ers at their own 34. Wendell Tyler. Bill Ring now the running back says. Montana goes to work deep in the direction of Ronaldo Nimaya. Stretch him out a little bit. But, you know, they started out, and they started out with those short passes, and I think they do want to do that, stretch them out. Let's watch Bubba Paris, number 77 there against Richard Dent. He has a little help from Tyler. Sometimes those backs get in your way, though, and more, more help, they kind of hinder you. 
But I think that's the first shot that Montana has taken today. Everything else has been underneath. Everything else has been quick. As you look at 300 and plus pound Bubba Paris, he was looking forward to the challenge of Richard Dent. He'll get it. Here's Montana sliding outside the 40. Sensick was the man who looked him in the eyes. Well, you know, as Bubba Paris was saying, he said, if Richard Dent beats me, I know I'm going to hear about it. But if I block him, I'd like to hear about that, too. I mean, he's a Pro Bowl player. No one talks about me. The center's in the Pro Bowl. The right guard's in the Pro Bowl. The right tackle's in the Pro Bowl. He said, they don't talk about me except when I get beat. So if I block him, how about uh, saying, hey, uh, well, Bubba played pretty good. It's third down. Dent is right in front of Paris. Quickly outside to Russ Francis. the defender and that's one of the keys to beating that 46 that tight end has got to get, get loose watch Richard Dent here on Bubba Harris uh, Bubba Paris now Paris gets those big arms out keeps away now, watch what Dent does he's trying to take him off he just starts swinging to get those hands away Paris is saying I'm still blocking you and now they do a little talking but that's not bad you see how he gets, gets those big arms out there get the hands up then you can't rush from there the guy gets in close to you, then you're in trouble with speed like Dan has. Grading that action, Bubba's one up. First and ten. Bill Ring, who replaced Craig. Barrels off to the right side. Bill Picked Ring. up a couple, just got across midfield before Duerson knocked him out of bounds. Over on the sideline, Walter Payton. only one game in his career amazing the all-time rusher the leading rusher in the NFL Suey next to him the blocker they block for each other hard to call either one of them the blocker isn't it? you see Suey he had that leg going though he's ready to get back in there he wants to get back in there and do some running blocking and stuff Montana steps up fire Wilson was the intended receiver Finsick did the dive along with Todd Bell Let's look again and see how Paris and Dent are doing down there in the pits. 95, Richard Dent going to the Pro Bowl, Bubba Paris blocking him. Now that time he didn't get his hands up there, see, until late. Now what he's doing, letting him go up the field, push him beyond the quarterback because Montana always steps up to throw it. I like the first technique, though. Boom, get your hands on him right now. I like that better than keeping your hands down and letting him run around you. Terry, it's incomplete. They call it an incomplete pass. Hartenstein and Hampton put the heat on Montana. Singletary put the heat on Bill Ring. He was really flying down that line. Now, Singletary covers deep. Sometimes he'll get 30 and 40 yards deep in this pass defense. And when he gets there, he can do something. You know, a lot of guys can run fast, but when they get where they're going, they don't do much. Some guys run fast, then when they get there, they do a lot. Like Singletary. He's one of those guys. This is Runniger. Jim Fisher back deep for the Bears, and Fisher is going to handle it. No fair catch. Fisher to the 20. Fumble. But the Bears got it back. Todd Shell. 37 yard punt by Runniger. Brought it back 10, so it's a net of 27, 6 nothing. Two field goals by Wershing, and that's been all the scoring so far. We thought the score would be low. The essence of hitting. George Brent. And next Sunday on CBS, there's NBA action with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who is playing still brilliantly in his 16th NBA season. The Lakers against the Detroit Pistons. Pistons, of course, led by Isaiah Thomas. It's next Sunday, 12 o'clock Eastern Time, right here on CBS. Right now on CBS, 6-0, 49ers over the Bears. Suri and Peyton behind Fuller. Peyton, left side. Michael Carter, who is a big load, was carried a few yards by Peyton. 
Well, that's a tough middle in there when you get a Michael Carter in there, and then you get Ricky Ellison and Jack Reynolds side by side with him. You're going to get some stuff in there. What's Jay Hilgenberg there? He has to come off a of Carter, then try and get Hacksaw Reynolds. He gets him out, but it's too late because Carter goes around and comes in and makes a tackle. A gain of three by Peyton, second at seven. Bears operating from their own 23, trailing 6 nothing. Suey. Stop. Ricky Ellison, number 50. Remember, Roger Craig went to the 49er locker room. Hand injury was the report. It's not broken. He's had it retaped. And Craig should be back. You can see his right hand has been retaped. I think that might cause some difficulty catching. Well, he's trying to get it comfortably. You see, he had the scissors there. And it's probably too tight now. He's going to cut it to loosen it up so he has full flexibility in the hand. Just watching, he called the trainer over for some additional work. Third and six, Fuller out of the shotgun, looks upfield, throws to Peyton, shakes one tackler. Peyton is stopped short of the first down by about a yard by Mike Walter, number 99, with help from Ronnie Lott. Ronnie Lott, I think, is the guy that stopped him from getting the first down on that play. This is a real challenge for Ronnie Lott. I think anytime Walter Payton gets the ball, his motor goes up about another 20 miles an hour. Now, Payton still had a shot there to get the first down, but the guy that stopped it was 42, Ronnie Lott. He was the guy that finished off that run for Payton. Because I think without Lott being there, Payton could have stretched it out another yard and had the first down. Two-minute warning has been issued now. The Bears, by the way, have three timeouts remaining. The 49ers have two. but I still pump iron. So after lifting a few hundred pounds, it's nice to lift one of these. Light beer for Miller. Light tastes great, and it's less filling with a third less calories than the regular beer. They know bodybuilding is hard work, but having a great body has its advantages. Sure makes it easy to pick up guys. Hi, Ronnie. Oh, well, hi there. What's going on here? Hey, honey, how about a lift home, huh? Light beer from Miller. Everything you always want. Magnificent city. By the Bay, San Francisco, the home of the 49ers. And 49er fever has really captured this community, this city. So far, the 49ers are not disappointing the faithful here. Ahead 6-0. We just got the two-minute warning. And Finzer, number 15, who has really done a, an excellent job punting so far. NFL Most Valuable Player segment is brought to you by IBM. Burt Jones may be a good old boy from Ruston, Louisiana, but in 1976, he's a nightmare to opposing defenses. The Ruston rifle throws for over 3,000 yards and 24 touchdowns, but he leads the Colts to an 11-3 record by doing whatever's necessary. For his efforts, Jones is named the league's most valuable player. FC Championship, Pat Summerall here with John Madden. San Francisco 6-0 over the Bears. The timeouts remaining. Bears have all of theirs. The 49ers have two with a minute and 50 seconds left to play. First half. Montana. Bought in 
himself some time. That's Dwight Clark. And Clark scrambles to the Bears 37 before Spencer gets him out of bounds. It's a gain of 23. And I'll tell you, that one, you have to give credit to the offensive line on this play because they gave Joe Montana time. He had protection to wait for Dwight Clark to come from the left side, get open here, and then come all the way across the field. Now, that is a heck of a lot of time. He was standing back there with the ball, waiting for Clark to come across. Watch his pass protection here. There's Bubba Paris again on Dent, pushes him to the inside, helped by Wendell Tyler. But Montana is standing behind all that bunch of guys finding Dwight Clark. Here's Montana back to throw again. Has some more time. Misread by somebody. Ronaldo Nehemiah was the nearest man there. Solomon and Nehemiah were together on that side. Montana went deep and nobody else did. Well, the closest guy was Todd Bell back there, number 25. You see, they get a bump in there. Bell got the bump in there first on Nehemiah. See, and that forced them two together. So Montana, when he saw it, he had nothing to throw to, so he just threw that one away. That'll bring up second and 10. Montana, 12 out of 21 so far. A minute 36 left to play first half. 49ers leading 6 up. Craig and Tyler behind Montana. Here comes Durison on a blitz. Montana gets it out to Solomon. Out of bounds is Freddie. About a foot shy of the first down. Yeah, the 49ers are really going maximum pass protection and just putting two receivers out. They have eight of them in their block and, and two out. You see, they keep Francis the tight end, they keep Frank the back, and they get all that pass protection there. McMichael just gets a hand up, but Montana's the type of guy who can get it around him. Six catches already for Freddie Solomon, who might have been shaken a little bit on that last reception. 49ers now operating with two tight ends. And Montana gets the first down. Short yardage sneak by Montana. A duck by Montana. They move down to the 25. Timeout San Francisco. They have one left. Saturday next weekend, the 15-round IBF World Lightweight Championship between Harry Arroyo and Terrence Ali. That's going to be a good fight, Pat. These guys are about even. You know, they talk about, you know, who's favored and so on, and there's really no favorite in this one. They're both even. Arroyo is a champion, but I've watched this Ali for a long time. I really like this kid. And also next weekend on Sports Saturday, the great pool shootout, trick shots, Super Bowl preview with those two guys. Will we be live, you think? We'll be live and we'll be reviewing and previewing and all kinds of viewing. And then Sunday, the World Triathlon Championship and the All-Madden team. I hope I make that. Well, you know, you're in it. You're on it. You're part of it. And the only criterion is guys have to be, you know, uh, kind of big, uh, play on grass, dirty guys, uh, you know, stuff hanging off their uniform. No artificial turf, no dome stadiums, no waves, no mayors making bets, none of that stuff. I'm glad I made it. Richard Dent is saying that he was held by Bubba Paris. Dan Hampton was the guy who made sure that Montana went down. The 49ers have already used two timeouts. They're trying to save one here and go quick. They can't get their receivers back. Montana couldn't get the play. His receivers are just getting back to the huddle now. They only have one timeout. They don't want to burn it. And we're down to just over a minute left. away from the rush. Chased by Otis Wilson. No flag. Single Terry. And Wendell Tyler got all tangled up, but there was no penalty marker. Is Worshing capable of getting it there from this far? It's third down. I think Single Terry was going for the ball and found Tyler in the way. Watch him. He's just coming across there. He gives him the pump there. He gives him a pretty good shot. 
Williams from Montana. Bubba Paris with a block that saved Montana. He may also made the tackle that stopped Vincic. Plus, I think this is the biggest confidence builder right now for the Chicago Bears. They can go in here at halftime, you know, without dodging all those bullets, making things like this happen. He's getting rushed by Hampton, throws off balance. Fensick jumps right in front of Dwight Clark, and he has a ball for the Bears. That's his second interception, just from alert play. So he's just around there. Hampton's giving him a whap, then another whap. Montana's done. He doesn't know what happened. It's bad yet. Now he sees oh. Interception of Montana, both by Fensick. That's five in the last two weeks. Here goes Fuller. Down goes Fuller by Michael Carter. Fourth time he's been sacked, and now they take a timeout. The Bears take a timeout. You know, there's a lot of pressure in a championship game. In fact, I feel of all the games that are played in the National Football League, there's more pressure in this game than any game. And I think it would be a smart move for the Bears just to run out the clock, go in and regroup. They trail the 49ers 6 to nothing. I'm glad you could be a part of this. For his enshrinement into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Mr. Sonny Jurgensen. Vince Lombardi and all the other... I never thought I would be here, but to, to be here in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, it's like coming home again. It's a, a dream when you come from North Carolina and, and a little school down there, and then you play at Duke University, a team that really didn't throw the ball very much. Very fortunate to get in professional football. As an NFL quarterback, Sonny threw for over 30,000 yards. He's still ranked as the number one lifetime passer in the NFC. Vince Lombardi said of Sonny, the thing about Jurgensen is he always wanted to win so fiercely. All the great ones have that. Hall of Fame is a great play. I'm sure that uh, some young kid could come in here and look at these things and make a decision whether or not he would like to be a professional football player. This is where all those dreams come true in the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. Don't miss it. This message furnished by the National Football League. The Bears have really dodged some disastrous situations. They only trail six to nothing, and they played good defense. They picked off two of Montana's passes, both by Fensick. Look at the yards passing. The 49ers 181, the Bears three. Second and 16. The Bears have thrown 10 passes to get those free. And here's another one. Tasui, the three pass. Michael Carter is there to make the stop, the nose tackle again. The Bears have not made a first down in this quarter. Now the Bears take a timeout. That surprises me. Coming up at the half. talking with Dan Marino and of course those two people will be around to analyze what happened in the first half. Dick Vermeil on the left and Brent Musburger on the right. Here's Fuller. I was kind of surprised that the that the Bears took a time out here because now they're third and about 17 or 18. What's Mike Dick on that last play? <laughs> we got to get rid of We got to get some yards. Green play should have worked. I better pick up this game plan and see what I have left here. But I think that you know, you know that they've dodged a lot of bullets in this half, and I don't think that in in this game that you have to have any macho deal at this point in the game. I think going in uh, just down six to nothing would be a real plus for the Bears right now. When you look back at what they've done in the first half, as far as throwing is concerned and big plays are concerned, right now it's third and twenty at the twenty-three. They have thrown 11 passes. You know what their net yardage is? Zip. None. Yeah, none. So well, that wouldn't be a bad thing, you know, just to, to run out the clock here. I was really surprised at that last time out. I thought maybe the 49ers would take. I think that last time out gives the 49ers an advantage because they can stop them here and force the Bears to punt. And the 49ers still have one timeout left. Here's Fuller up under the center. Johnson takes down Walter Payton. Now the 49ers will probably take that timeout. But I still don't think the Bears.
Bears had to take the timeout to run Peyton in there. I agree and that with gave you. the 49ers the possibility to take this timeout with 19 seconds. Now they can do one. They can go for a punt block. Then get the, if they don't block it, go for another play. to get as many yards as he could, which I think is smart because, as you say, the clock is going to stop anyway at change of possession. So once they tackle him, they're going to stop it. So you may as well get as much as you can. Dana McLemore here wasn't counting on getting as much as he could and then losing 15 yards of it to a penalty. The illegal block, number 52, receiving team during the return. Blanchard Montgomery, number 52 who's had a rather unique role in this game so far. One fight. He was the guy that knocked the punter down. Remember, right. Fitzer was running down. He was looking up at his right. punt. Right. And uh, he got the whap on him. And the 49ers take over at their own 31, and they'll probably now just run it out. Wendell Tyler, hammered by Singletary and Otis Wilson. And that should take care of the first half at Candlestick. Unusual but entertaining. The 49ers go to the locker room leading 6-0 over the Chicago Bears. The Bears unable to do very, very much on offense, but still their defense has kept them in range at 6-0. Is the Bears haven't been able to get to Montana, but I do feel that the Bears picked up defensive momentum in the second quarter. Exactly. Now let's shift our focus down to Miami, Dick, because it was the highest scoring AFC championship game ever. 45 to 28. The Miami Dolphins are going back to the Super Bowl and for Don Shula close it out 45 28 and what an afternoon Dan Marino had more than 400 yards and four touchdowns Terry Bradshaw of our CBS sports staff was down to the Orange Bowl and following the game he spoke to Marino. Congratulations Dan great game 45 28 I got it I got to ask you one thing Go, it, in, in the first quarter. Uh, things didn't look quite the way uh, the Dolphins wanted them. Steve was really doing a fine job. Second quarter, 14 points in a minute and a half going into the half. Was there a change in offense, change in philosophy to really put those points on the board? Uh, not really, Terry. I think uh, you know, going into uh, the game, we just knew we can go off the field on them in certain situations, especially in third down because of the speed of our receivers and the type of coverages they played. And uh, <clears throat> there was, uh, we get we get four guys going upfield on them, and uh, our, their uh, two deep safeties had to make a decision, go one way or the other, especially with the speed we have on the outside. And uh, we were able to complete a few balls in the last two minutes doing that. And uh, we had uh, two touchdowns on that. And then 
uh, with the blitzes they were coming with. Our guys did a great job of, of recognizing the blitzes and, and doing their breakoffs that they're supposed to do, and we got it done. So, Have you ever, have you ever sat down and, and really stopped and thought, just for a second, all the things that you've accomplished in one year, actually in two years, now you're going to the Super Bowl. You ever just sat down and said, golly, Dan, boy, can you believe all these things that have happened <laughs> no. to you? Uh, no, I really don't think about it that much. Uh, it's something that I'm having a lot of fun, but it's something I'm not really sitting down and saying, hey, you know, looking back on what's happening and everything, I just, just go and do just what do I got to do. Just having fun. Just having fun, that's all. All right, you got the 49ers and the Bears having a great game out on the West Coast. All right, I want to ask you, who do you want to play? Don't say just any one of them, Terry. Who do you really want to play? Who do you match up best well, with? I like to play uh, <clears throat> the Bears because my buddy Jimbo's on the offensive line. It'll be nice to see him out in California. All right. Thank you, Dan. All right. <laughs> Good enough reason, but the Bear offense will have to put some points on the board. We'll continue with the NFL today after this message and a word from your local stations. The look is lean and trim. The car is cavalier. From today, Chevrolet. The well-honed power of a two-liter electronically fuel-injected engine. The instinctive agility of front drive, cavalier. It has the look and the performance for today's America. This is today's Chevrolet. It's fit. Live today, Chevy. Live today, Chevy. Live it. Chevy. You know, one of the best things about being an ex-big leaguer is getting freebies to the game. Call the front office, bingo. And once these fans recognize me, I probably won't even have to pay for my life here for Miller. Down and <laughs> I love them. These fans know I drink light because it's less filling and it tastes great. Good seats, huh? You're in the wrong shape, buddy. Come on. Oh, I must be in the front come on, row. Come on, come on. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Good seats, hey, buddy? He missed the tag. He missed the tag. Tonight, a congressman's mysterious death brings Jessica to the halls of power. Somebody moved his body. But she soon discovers that murder corrupted. And the Niners lead the Bears here at the half. The most unusual sight in the first half. That's easy. Number 88, a wide receiver, Freddie Solomon, at quarterback. He played a little quarterback down in Tampa. Dick Vermeil, Bill Walsh should do anything. Yes, he will. An example will be this play we're going to show. They run a veer option blocking where they turn the defensive line. See at the top of your screen, they did not bother to block number 73, turning loose upfield. Wendell Tyler now, having run this stuff in college, runs it well. And there he is, loose for a nice gain. What were they taking advantage of there? The wide play and alignment of the defensive end out there in space, and they just slipped the ball in underneath him. Dick, what about the 49ers' play selection inside the five-yard line on first down? Well, I think if you're going to throw the ball inside the five, the best time to do it is on first down, and they've done it twice in the first half. Both times it's backfired, and once with this interception. Yeah, let's take a look at Gary Fensick because he has the two bare interceptions so far. Two so far. This is a very nice play. Actually, I think if the ball would have been thrown a little higher, he would not have been able to make that interception. But you have to give Gary credit. He really did a good job. Now, the 49ers have left the Bears in this game. Are they going to come back? Well, I tell you, I, I feel this. the Bears have gained momentum. The 49ers still have a lot of tools to use in their offense. If they go ahead and get it in once they get inside, I think it's going to be tough on the All Bears. All right. You know, Dick, San Francisco in this game using some still photographs against that Chicago defense. And for more on that story, here's Irv Cross. Irv? Reggie, you may often wonder what goes in the locker room at halftime. Well, both the 49ers and the Bears use these Polaroid shots. This happens to be a sequence of shots from the Bears photographer. We also have them from the 49ers as well. But the first time the 49ers got on the five-yard line, this is what it looked like. The 49er offense is going in. Here's the Bear defense coming out. And this is what the play looked like before the ball was snapped. And the coaches use these to try to, try to see what the spacing looks like, what kind of formations that the uh, and adjustments they have to make uh, during the course of the first half. Now, once the ball was snapped, this is the kind of picture we had. Montana was rolling to his right. You can see the Bear corner was blissing, trying to put pressure on Joe, moving him out of the pocket. The Bears did that successfully in the first half. Three times, the 49ers were on the 10-yard line, and they only came up with two field goals because of that pressure. Brent? All right, 30 minutes to a Super Bowl just down the road. The Miami Dolphins are in. Will it be San Francisco or Chicago? Let's go upstairs now to Pat Summerall and John Madden. Pat? Well, Brent, you know, they promised us some rather unusual things the 49ers did, and let's take a look at some unusual things that they did. Here's the first one. Look who is the quarterback. Montana first, 
He goes left. Number 88, Freddie Solomon goes under and runs the option play. He hasn't seen that since his days at Tampa. Play number two, here's John I Madden. wouldn't be surprised if we see some more of that one, along with this one in the second half. Here's a backup guard right here, Guy McIntyre, lining up as the halfback and blocking right here on Fensick on a running play. I think they want to do this to get him in there in addition to this running play type thing, but also for pass protection. We might see that again in the second half. Dwight Clark, number 87, is the intended receiver. You see Russ Francis go in motion, Montana back to throw. This is a second interception by Gary Fensick. The Bears only trailed six to nothing. I say only with all due respect because Fensick has two interceptions. The Bears wind up the first half with no yards passing, but they're still very much in this football game. San Francisco six nothing. Over the Bears, Finzer set to kick off. As Bill Walsh said, you know, we always had that script for the first half, and we've been kind of flat in the second half, so he wanted to do something about it. He was going to have a script now for the second half. We see this is the, the blackboard in the 49er locker room at halftime. So this, in essence, is their script for the second half. You can see in the right hand, those were all the runs. The middle and the left were all the passes. So he's just starting all over again with a new series of things. The first half script got him a 6-0 lead. To wait on second half. Here's a pass. Here's Montana back. Here's Montana Chase. He throws it out of bounds. He's hit by Richard Dent. Freddie Solomon was the intended receiver. Total offense in the first quarter. You saw the Bears not able to move it at all. Did not get any yards passing. Plus eight and minus eight. So nothing with their passing attack. And it's pretty hard to win like that. Well, that was the thing with the Bears. I think they're going to have to go back to establishing their run with Matt Suey and Walter Payton. And then the 49ers, of course, when they get the opportunities, they got to score with them. 49ers sent Tyler up the middle. Tyler rolls out very near a 49er first down. Dave Durson stopped him. This offensive line of the 49ers is really doing some job of, of turning out. Watch it here. It looks like old-time stuff, but the job that they did on Hampton there, knocking Hampton to the right and down, that's what enabled Wendell Tyler to get through there. Oh, Fred Quillen really did put one on Dan Hampton there. That was deserving of Quillen's trip to the Pro Bowl. They get to Tyler again. This time it's Hartenstein. From the offside, Tyler try to cut back. Flag is down on the play. Offside Bears. Probably one of those. It didn't look like anyone jumped offside. Offside, number 95, defense. Still first down. I thought it was Richard Dent lining up offside to so that neutral zone, they call it. Right there. I bet you that he, he was already in there and lined up there. No, he did take a step. He just got a little jump on that. That's a way to get by Bubba Paris and start before the ball snap, and you buy him when the ball snap. Montana sacked by Hampton and Steve McMichael, the two defensive tackles. Second sack by the Bears. They have become so renowned for this. You know, Steve McMichael made a spinner play on that. You don't see that very often. He's on the left-hand side. He starts right here, starts in here, and does a spinner like this and goes up on Montana. Now, a lot of times you see that spinning stuff, and it doesn't work. See that spin? Look, spin, 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 whirl. Then he just keeps running right around. And look what he finds here, Joe Montana. I like that spinner stuff when it works. When it doesn't work, work I say, don't do that. Second and 11, Montana back to throw. Into the pocket, chased by Denton, down by Denton, down goes the penalty flag, and he got Montana by the face mask. That's a tough one. You, know, you work all day against the guy who weighs 320 pounds. You finally get around. You finally get the quarterback, and in doing so.
so your hand gets on his face mask. Personal foul, face mask, number 95, defense, first down. Yeah. Here's Dan. Well, let's see if this is a five yard or a 15 yard. I think it's gonna be a 15 yard. See now, he does a whirl, he does a spin. I don't know why that's 15 yards. I mean, you know, he was reaching for him. His left hand got him in the face mask, but I didn't see him do anything that would constitute unnecessary roughness. In fact, his hand left the face mask. I think that's a bad call. The face mask, okay, but it should be a five-yard face mask. Should be five, and it's 15. It's a first down at the 39 for the 49ers. And here's Montana going deep, and he's got Solomon. Ooh, that's the thing Bill Walsh was talking about yesterday. We're going to break some big ones. We can get some big chances, we think, against this Mike Ditka Chicago defense. And we, we got to still got to hit him. We got to get the ball to the Freddie guys who Solomon. get open. Look at the move that he puts on Mike Richardson there. Richardson was outside. Freddie gave him a move to the outside. Then he just came up the field, and Joe Montana threw it about three yards too far. Look at him. He knows he has him. Ooh. If you don't hit him, it's just another incomplete. He had him. He knows it. Nehemiah split wide to the right. Clark is out wide to the left. Here comes that fair play. Montana is buried. He just barely got rid of it. Richard Dent. I'll tell you, Richard Dent didn't make his presence felt, especially in the first quarter. But he started to come on in the second quarter, and his third quarter, he's really starting to get something. Let's watch a blitz here. We'll see the middle linebacker Singletary coming, and when that happens, that puts all these guys right here man to man. And that's all you have to do for a guy like Dent is let him get on someone man to man. You see Singletary coming in there, diving, they run him through, and Dent catches him from behind. They had everybody coming, Durson. Dent, everyone. Montana back to throw. This time they don't blitz. Hartenstein is chasing Montana, and Montana comes up the sideline. Is cut and really cut by Durison. And Montana is holding his knee as he is down in front of the 49er bench. He knew he was going to take some shots when we talked to him yesterday, but that one looks a bit serious. like it was a third down play he didn't get the first down he was trying to get the first down most quarterbacks will go down or get out of bounds but Montana's third down he was trying to get that extra yardage on the first down and he took a blow right on the right knee Runniger gets off a high kick in the direction of Jeff Fisher who signals for a fair catch Montana over on the sideline being looked at by the medical staff here's the hit again coming up there, number 22. It looked like he put his helmet right on the knee. Tell you what, these Bears don't come to the football yard with a senior prom in mind. They came to hit. And walking normally over in front of the 49er bench, he took a pretty vicious hit. But he seems to be okay now. The Bears, with it first and ten at their own ten. Are the backs behind Fuller. Peyton now is the lone setback, and Fuller is going to throw. He gets it out to Peyton. Peyton struggles out to about the 15 before Reynolds and Turner converge to take him down. You know, the Bears really haven't had an awful lot of good field position today. In fact, they've had poor field position, and it's really hard to get an offense going in those types of situations. And I think what they're thinking is trying to get some first downs here. They, you know, they're they're on the 15-yard line. They're not thinking touchdowns. They're thinking, let's get a couple of first downs here and then go from there. Well, the last first down they made was the last play of the first quarter. Now we're in the middle of the third. Give us to Peyton. Peyton gets away from one tackle. And the 49er defense swarms all over him. The first man there was Eric Wright. And then Carlton Williamson and the rest of them came there. 
There's Carlton Williamson right here. Now watch him. Now that's the guy that has to do the force in the end of the line of scrimmage. See him there. He starts across. The guard's coming out on him. He just takes the guard and Walter on at the same time, forces him deep back behind, and that lets all the pursuit. Now that's what you call pursuit and gang tackle. See that about seven red jerseys on top of Peyton. 49ers bring Ronnie Lott out of the game, which is a little bit surprising. You know he had a bad shoulder, and they're checking it over on the sideline right now. McLemore is taking his place. Third down and 10 for the Bears at their own 11. Fuller out of the shotgun. Fuller had big hands Johnson in his face. Fuller threw it away in the direction of Peyton, but nothing doing. An inspired 49er defense now. Tell us who's the best. And Candlestick gets the men in red. Minzer, number 15, back in his own end zone, and McLemore standing close to midfield for the 49ers. because Bell's play in the corner, and that's the guy that has to make the tackles. You know, you think of Todd Bell made the Pro Bowl by doing things like Dorson's doing here. He's the guy that helps on the pass, but he's really involved in the running game, the running defense. Dorson. He's got his sleeves rolled up and ready to play. A fine athlete is Dorson. Second down and nine at the Bear 18. Tyler's back. Montana also is back. Montana takes off himself and dies to the 15 and flags go down. Singletary and Francis in a fracas. If you look at Bill Walsh checking to see what's going on. And that's where the flag was, Pat. It was thrown right at Singletary and Russ Francis. It was late. It can't be a pass interference because the ball wasn't thrown. The defensive guy can protect himself. So I bet they either pick it up or it's against Francis. Illegal contact. 
number 22, defense, while the quarterback was in the park. Five-yard penalty will be assessed from the end of the run. First down. Jordison. That's a tough penalty. Well, that's a tough penalty because once the quarterback starts to run, then, then the defensive backs can play off those, those uh, uh, blockers downfield. So it is tough on Jordison. You know, at what point does a guy become a blocker and he's not a receiver anymore? complete to a wide receiver by Chicago all day. Eric Wright was the defender. Here's the breakdown. Well, they have two to the tight ends, three to the running backs. Willie Galt is yet to touch the ball. Well, he did touch the ball. Remember, he, he tipped one and the ball went through for an interception. Here's Dennis McKinnon here. He just runs an out pattern on Eric Wright. Eric Wright was holding back a little too much. McKinnon was able to get outside. But I think the Bears are going to have to get the ball sometime to a Willie Galt 
The other thing I think they have to do is run to Walter Payton more. Just give him the ball. He'll do something. Seven and a half minutes left third quarter. They have to get a little bit of breathing room, and Fuller goes back to throw. Has some time. McKinnon again. Another Bear first down. Knocked out of bounds at about the 46 by Ronnie Lott. Uh, McLemore, it looks like, has taken Lott's place. The last six possessions by the Bears, where they started, not very well, and four times they went three and out. But as you, you said, they started in very poor position, and this is really the first time that, that they're getting any type of field position in this half. Around that midfield, now you can go to work. Now you feel comfortable. Air it out a little. At the 46, their own 46, as McKinnon swings in motion to the right, and Peyton comes left behind Kovic. Looking for some place to go, trying to hammer and looking, but nothing to do as Tina Turner and Ricky Ellison come out quickly. Well, Bill Walsh was saying that we'd like to hold Walter Payton to 140 or 150 yards before the game, and he's doing pretty well. He's held him to 58 so far in this third quarter. The only time the Bears really have been able to do anything on offense was with the opening kickoff. They took it and drove, and then they missed the field goal. Six minutes left to play in the third quarter. The 49ers 13, the Bears nothing. Johnson chasing Fuller to McKinnon again at the 49er 32. Carlton Williams in the defender, a gain of 21, a good throw by Fuller. McKinnon is one of those wide receivers who's a real tough guy. You know, he's had a, he's had a bad knee, he had a hairline fracture of his leg, but here he is back here playing, and he doesn't even look like anything's bothered him. Watch him come all the way across the field, catch the ball. Poor pass was behind him, made a great adjustment. From Florida State, he didn't start there. Neither did Zeke Moore. It was a tight end for the Giants, but they both have become starters in the NFL. Called a split wide to the left. Here is Peyton. Hammers down inside the 30. Dan Bunn on the bottom of the pile. This is the type of play, and I think Walter Payton's the type of back that you just have to keep pounding him. You know, he gets better as the game goes on. He has that great stamina, and you may stop him in the first quarter, you may stop him in the second and the third, but it's like Russian roulette. In that number 34, there's some live bullets. You just don't know which ones they are. Brad Anderson has replaced McKinnon. He is split wide to the right. Galt is to the left. Fuller on second down and seven from the 49 and 29. He gives on a delay to Peyton, and Peyton breaks out of the pack. Peyton to about the 24. Dwight Hicks playing with a sore ankle with an assist from Mike Walter. They bring him down. Now the the uh, Bears have a short yardage defense here, or a short yardage offense. We saw an interesting play in practice, a run pass. They handed it to Peyton, and he started to run to the right, and then they threw back to Dunsmore, the tight end, back on his left leg. This wouldn't be a bad place for that play. Peyton showed earlier, and he showed, of course, last week that he could throw it and will throw it. He's got Galt foot wide to the left. He's back there with Suey. Rolled in motion. They give to Peyton. He hurdles over the top. He's close to first down yardage, but it looks like he might be a half yard short. Jim Covert down there in the bottom of that pile. Walter Payton just takes the ball on a dive and just takes off. You know, but he had about three yards to take off to. There's not many backs. Maybe Walter Payton could dive three yards. I don't know many other backs in this league that could dive that far over a pile. Mike Ditka looking on. It would appear that he has decided we'll go for this one right now. we got to get back in this ball game. They asked for a measurement. I think he has to go for it, Pat. When you're down 13 to nothing, you need two scores. And I think the type of coach Mike Ditka is, the type of personality of the Chicago Bears, I think this is the type of thing they just have to do. I don't even think there's any decision here. 
Looks like about a full yard short. Here comes Dunsmore. You remember he caught that pass against the Redskins last week. Fuller was looking for the wristband for his play on this one. Ditka is looking on, giving that gun a workout. This is the formation that Peyton threw it to Dunsmore in practice. There goes Moorhead moving from one side to the other. Now he comes back the other way. The give is to Peyton. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage. I don't think he got it. Carter hit him back of the line of scrimmage, and maybe he did get it. Dwight Hicks finally got him down, but that is not first down Bears. If he got it, that's first down Peyton. That's all Peyton. Michael Carter got penetration. That's one thing on short yardage you can't have. That's one thing the 49ers got. He got in there, but he didn't do anything. Peyton did it. Peyton got the first down. Now watch your penetration here. Watch Carter right there. Peyton gets the ball. There's Carter. Look at that move. He made off his right foot, then off his left foot, turned sideways, got his shoulder squared again, and got knocked into a first down. That's only a yard. And that's about as good a one-yard run as you'll ever see right there. That move you talked about and that strength and that desire. Fuller on a draw play to Peyton to the outside. Carlton Williamson and Ronnie Lott bring Peyton down. Well, yeah, we're talking about that Ronnie Lott and the intensity that he has. And we were saying the other day that Walter Peyton, he thinks, is the best back in football. And he said there's something that when he has that ball, he said, I don't want to show respect. I just want to get to him to make him respect me. And he's been doing it. I said that earlier, but he's still doing it. That's a pretty fine tribute from one athlete to another, isn't it? Well, he said sometimes you can respect guys so much you just put them in awe and you don't do anything. They run right by you. So that's not going to happen. Those 61 yards that Peyton has are tough yards. 20 carries. Alvin Thomas is the man in motion. Fuller's back to throw. Look out, Steve. Dwayne Board gets the fifth sack. said he couldn't retrieve his own shadow, but you didn't give up on him. Now comes your time. To Miller time! And Miller time means it's time for the best beer you can find. Miller High Life. Bring your thirsty self right here, the rich, smooth taste of Miller beer is what you have in mind. Welcome to Miller High Life. Welcome to Miller time! 
like small cars. We need more room. Today, Chevrolet has a car for you, the mid-sized celebrity. Feel the room, ride in style, go in comfort every mile. Enjoy mid-sized room with economy and a price that's surprisingly small. Celebrity. Lots of stuff here. If this is today's Chevrolet, I like it. And we need it. Drive today's Chevy. Live today's Chevy. Live it. Chevy. There's a college basketball doubleheader coming your way next Saturday on CBS Sports. In the first game, second-ranked Duke will host Washington. And most of you will see... 10th ranked DePaul take on Houston, while those in the South will see Kentucky against Alabama. That's next Saturday, beginning at noon Eastern, right here on CBS. CBS Sports Today is bringing you from Candlestick, the NFC Championship game. The 49ers lead the Bears 13-0. Roger Craig over the left side for a couple of yards. Richard Dent on the bottom of the pile. 53 seconds left to play third quarter. Miami has beaten Pittsburgh, as you know, I'm sure. They're in the Super Bowl, and one of those two, one of these two, will also make that trip. Not very long if you're a 49er. dealer on the 1985 standard bid Toyota's hard-working reliable lowest price truck and by Miller High Life welcome to Miller time Jim McMahon the injured bear quarterback looking on from the sideline you know he'd like to be playing 13 nothing his team is down to about the 31. Single Terry on the tackle. Gain of six in the fourth quarter. Here's what has transpired so far. Bears 65, allowed 89, a minus 24 to 49ers in this year. This is regular season now, 141 scored, allowed 64, plus 77. They haven't scored a point, the 49ers haven't, until this game second half of the last two games. Tyler. Fensick made a stop and Fensick is hurt. He caught Tyler's thigh in the shoulder. That's an interesting play. It's what you call flooding a zone. They're going to have Craig short, Wendell Tyler in the middle right there, and White Clark was deep. So if they're up tight, he can hit Tyler. If they all come up, he hits Clark deep. If they all drop off, he could have been hit Craig. Fensick is out over on the sideline. For the Bears, Frazier has come in, and Todd Bell has moved back to his regular safety position. Here's Roger Craig. Craig breaking down the middle. Craig inside the 20 to the 13. Richardson and Frazier brought him down. First, the biggest game of the day for the 49ers. Hey, when the 49ers traded for Wendell Tyler and drafted Roger Craig, it made them a different offensive team. It gave them this type of thing where they could run the ball, where they could get as big a play out of a running play as they did out of a pass. This guy here was their leading pass receiver, caught 71 passes this year and can come up with a big play. 
Watch the left guard, number 68, John Ayers, come out here and make that block on number 90, Harris. And then Craig was right in behind him and cut right off him. And he put it away at the end. See him put both arms around, boom, boom. They say 39 yards. Fencing is back, and Craig goes to the right. Craig hammers inside the 10 to about the 9. Fensick on the tackle along with Otis Wilson. The 49ers trying to put it away. You know, this bear defense has had to do so much today. It's had so many shots at it. It's getting to wear down now. The 49er offense is starting to get in that period where they're wearing this bear defense down. You, know, you can only take so many shots at a defense when your offense isn't doing anything. It puts more and more and more pressure on the defense as the game goes on. Cooper comes out. Tyler comes in. The Bear defense really has spent a lot of time on the field. Wilson goes out wide to the right. Clark is to the left. Gets back to Craig. Get out the line of scrimmage. It was second and six in the 10, and he got about back to the 10. Long day for the Bear offense as you look at Mark Bortz, number 62. Well, you know, it's been a big day for the 49er defense. They really didn't let that Bear offense get on track. They're still in the pregame warm-up. Montana brings them out. They're at the 10, third and six from the 10. Montana back to throw. A couple of guys loose. Solomon is loose as well. Montana to Solomon. Fuller. They get it out to 
Matsui. And Kena Turner is right there with Mike Walter. No gain, maybe one, but no more than that. There are the 49er coaches. Well, you know, the guy to the far left of the screen, George Seifert, he's the he's the defensive coordinator. And, you know, they always talk about the offensive, uh, excuse me, the second guy from the left with the glasses right there in the middle. Uh, but they've always talked about the offense. But here's a guy who's done a heck of a job with really? his defense. And really? They are really something. I mean, they play the pass well, the run well, play a lot of guys, do a lot of things. You don't hear as much about that half. Here's Fuller. Tisui. He is really hammered by Ricky Ellison and Carlton Williamson. And Mike Walter again. Look at that 49er offense. They're all in the air. Wide receivers and tight ends always want to stay close to the quarterback. You ever see that? I mean, it's Russell. Oh, yeah. Clark's talking to him. Freddie Solomon. Ronaldo Nehemiah. And then when the quarterback tries to get away, he goes by the kicker. See, because no one stands around the kicker. So if you want to be alone, you go next to the kicker. <laughs> for Chicago as far as their third down conversion. Fuller will try here on third. He's going to take off and convert it. Steve Fuller out of bounds, pursued by Ronnie Lott, but he gets a pickup of 23 yards. He gets right to midfield, and the Bears do get some breathing room. The big Keith Van Horn, the right tackle of the Bears, got a takedown block on Fred Dean. And that's how Steve Fuller was able to run on that play. Let's see if we can see it. Here it is right here. Watch Fred Dean. You see Van Horn come out. You see he takes an inside, gets that hand up, just drives him right into the pile and keeps him there. They put a big pile of red jerseys. Fuller sees an ass. Says, There's a pretty big gap. I'll just run out there. Not a bad block by Van Horn. He's, that Dean's tough to block. So the Bears will operate right from midfield. Here comes a fake reverse. Take off. Go deep. And there's nothing there. Looking in the direction of Peyton, right with him was Keena Turner. Talk about your impressive guys. Keena Turner's one of those. Really good player, but to talk to him. Well, you know, he's one of those guys that's very aware. He He's always in this defense. He's the guy that's always played. They substitute a lot. Keena Turner plays run-down linebacker, pass-down, short yardage, goal line. He plays the whole package. And he used to always be an underrated guy. They'd say, you know, Keener Turner's the most underrated guy. Well, now he's in the Pro Bowl, so you can't call him underrated. Now, now he's rated. He's rated. Nine and a half minutes, 931 left to play. 20 to nothing, 49ers. Second and 10, more hit in motion. Fuller back to throw. Half time throws in the direction of Moorhead. Nothing doing, and who's there? such a good athlete, Keena Turner, and has such great speed that he can line up anywhere. On that play, he was lined up outside. You see him here. He's outside there with Moorhead. Now watch, Moorhead's going to go outside, then come back in. Keena Turner just goes out with him, then comes back in with him, throws that left hand in there, and knocks the ball down. From Purdue. How do you think he got a name Keena? Do you know? Yeah, his mother was watching some television show, and one of the, there was an Indian in it by the name of Kina. So she named Kina, Kina. Okay. Here's Fuller. Off the scramble again, slides to the 45. A pickup of about five on third down. Carlton Williamson made sure he stayed down. The Bears are going to have to go for this one, I would imagine, with 9-10, clock still running, 9-08 left to play. As you say, when you're down by 20 points, there's nine minutes and it's a championship game. There's nothing to wait for. You don't have to punt them into position. You just have to get something going. You've been playing for three and a half quarters and you haven't gotten it yet, so you got to take another shot. Moorhead and Steve Fuller in a conversation. It's fourth and four. Galt comes out wide to the right. Dennis McKinnon out wide to the left. He's been the only effective wide receiver the Bears have been able to use a low snap. Pass is incomplete, intended for Moorhead, and the 49ers will take over. Tom Homo broke it up. Carlton Williamson also on the defense.
championship led by San Francisco 20 to nothing. Pat Summerall and John Madden at Candlestick Park where the 49er faithful are starting to chant Super Bowl. As their team leads 20 to nothing over the Bears. Packed house. 61,040 at Candlestick. A new San Francisco record today about some noisy fans there's some of them here right and they only have to go down the uh, road about 10 or 15 miles to palo alto here for the super bowl flag is down montana gets it out of craig craig out of bounds at about the bear 46 but a penalty marker is down singletary knocked him out of bounds craig Joe, Joe Montana, excuse me, is the type of guy that just frustrates defensive linemen. You see in that last play, Richard Dent got there. Just as he gets there, whoop, he dumps it off. He looks like if you ever got a good shot at him, which you never get, he'd break. Illegal formation. Well, he's a rubbery man. guy. Now watch Dent. He just goes by Bubba Paris there, falls down. He's reaching there, reaching, grabs him, gets him around both legs, and he looks up. See, he's looking right now for the ball. He's, there's no ball there. So how do you get rid of that thing? He had it when I hit him. <laughs> That's frustration. Penalty marker down, however. It's first and 15 at the 39 in Montana. Not going to sit on it. For Wilson. Led him perfectly to the outside, away from the defender, just a little too far. You know, it's interesting when you get the 49ers with a 20 nothing lead, eight minutes. This is the time that Bill Walsh does two things. This is when he runs, so that brings up the things that look like they run more. And it's when he throws deep, so the guy scouting him, you know, the Dolphins, they'll look and they say, well, we got to be aware. This is when they do things that they normally don't do to get into position to win. If that makes any sense. It does to me. <laughs> 20 to nothing. 8.16 left to play. Clock is stopped now. Montana out quickly. In the direction of Clark. Clark took it in. Montana threw it out. Hey, you're not going to see that one very often where, where Montana and Clark misread each other. You know, one thing with that deep pass that's interesting is the 49ers don't practice throwing deep because they can't. They only have one practice field. Half of it is artificial turf. The other half is mud. So they never practice in the mud. They just practice in the artificial turf. So if they're on the 20, they can only throw the ball 30 yards anyway. There is some grass on that other end, but it's mostly mud. But the 49ers aren't the type of team that get around a waddle in mud. Third down, Montana looks to Solomon, then looks at the 40-yard line and says, I'll take it down here. And now they'll send on Max Runniger. Twenty to nothing. The NFC Championship game. There have been several shutouts in championship games. The last one was nine nothing. The Rams, 1979, over Tampa Bay. There were a couple of Baltimore and Cleveland's that ended up in shutouts, and then I was with one myself against Green Bay. So you get so fired up to go out and play a big game and get shut out. Runniger doesn't get it all. Jeff Fisher feels it on the high. And is buried by the men in red. Ricky Ellison, first guy down. It turned out to be a 39-yard punt. You notice how the teams that are good teams that go all the way are good in every area. Defense, offense, and we just saw their special team. Something unexpected shows up. Hey, what's that, a Toyota? The 1985 Toyota Corolla GTS. A Toyota, dependable. A Corolla, affordable. A different kind of Corolla. A sleeper, a car for the street, powered by a new twin cam, electronically fuel-injected. What's he got in there? 16-valve engine. What's he got in there? Known as the TC-16. Yeah, what's he got in there? <laughs> First, someone gets an idea. Then, someone else may look at it differently. Even add a thought or two. Technology from a company called TRW helps ideas get around. 
Because getting an idea from one place to another is as important as getting an idea. Tomorrow is taking shape at a company called TRW. Sunday, after 60 minutes, a congressman's death brings Jessica to the halls of power. Somebody moved his body. Herschel Bernardi guest stars with Angela Lansbury in Murder, She Wrote. The San Francisco 49ers 20. The Bears nothing. The 49ers defense left the NFL on the fewest points allowed with 227. First down. And they have played extremely well today. Maybe they felt insulted with all the attention going to the Bear defense. They pitched the shutout so far. Here's Fuller sprinting out to the right. Chased by Gary Johnson and taken down. Dan Hampton over on the Bear sideline watching the 49ers. You, know, you just had a feeling as you were watching Gary Johnson chase Fuller that he was going to get there. With each step, he just kept picking up more speed and speed, you know, and the determination. Because when you run again all the way across the field like this, but watch as he gets closer, the, that determination goes up about 10, 15, 20 percent. That's his third sack of the day, Johnson's. And the 49ers have sacked Fuller seven times, second and ten. Pulls it down, is hit by Fred Dean. Dean takes Fuller down. Eight sacks by the Niners. You know, one thing about Fred Dean, let's watch him in the pass rush. He is a tenacious guy. He starts, and then if you're going to pull up and hold the ball, you better watch out for him coming around behind you. But watch, he just starts, and then he goes to the outside, then he's coming back on Jim Covert. Now when Fuller steps up and doesn't pump, or pumps and doesn't throw it, you know you're going to have Fred Dean in your back. Clock running at just over six minutes left to play as McKinnon comes wide to the right. Third and 13 for the Bears from their own 20. Fuller comes in motion and Fuller goes back. Let's see if he has time this time. Now he shuffles out and Dean chases. Drops the ball. Fumble. Fumble. It goes out of bounds. Fumble. The Bears will retain possession. Singletary. Al Harris is taken out of bounds. Five 
20 left to play. The 49ers up 20 to nothing. Well, you know, you talk about guys that go all the time. Dwight Clark is that same type of guy. We talked about Walter Payton, you know, how he has that stamina. He's always going. This Dwight Clark is the same way. He's going to look at three or four guys on him. Practice, plays every down. Matt Cavanaugh has taken Montana's place. Montana, 18 out of 23. 18 out of 34, I beg your pardon, for 233 yards. And they were, some of those completions were tough ones. You know, as Bill Walsh told us yesterday, he said, if we're going to beat the Bears and beat the Bear defense, the most important thing is Joe Montana and Joe Montana executing. He said it's going to be tough for Montana, both physically and mentally, to absorb everything he put in challenge of that bear defense. And he rose to an occasion, didn't he? Sure did. Clark is also out. Wilson is good wide to the left. Here's Bill Ring. Ring hammers inside the bear 40 to about the 38. Stopped by Ron Rivera. This is a part of the 49er offense we were talking about, Pat. You know, as you look at their statistics over the year, and they end up about 50-50 run and pass, but this is where they get a lot of their run at this part of the game. Dwight Clark with his shirt hanging out comes back in. The Chicago total defense, the average yards they allowed during the regular season was 241.4. Today, the 49ers ripped up 371. But they've been on the field a long time. Kavanaugh ducks over the right side for the first down. Look at Dwight Clark out there with that shirt tail out. Those are the kind of guys I like. They got the gloves on, dirt. I mean, they're a wide receiver. That's the way a wide receiver should look. You know, most big guys look that way, like offensive linemen. They never keep their shirt tail in. Most wide receivers, however, do not look like that. That's Billy Wilson, who was a pretty good receiver himself, just shaking hands with Dwight Clark. Billy now works on the 49er coaching staff. He was a player. He was a great one, Billy Wilson. Goose. Derek Harmon around the right side, spreading, taken down by Al Harris, out of bounds, stops the clock. Four minutes, 11 seconds left to play. The Dolphins and the 49ers in Super Bowl 19. One thing the 49ers have to watch out for now is all the pats on the backs you have to take. You know, I mean, everyone is congratulating everyone and everyone, the fans, and, and then your phone rings all the time because I'll guarantee you starting tonight for the next two weeks, every person they ever knew is going to be calling them up for Super Bowl tickets. Well, you get relatives you never even heard of and say, hey, I'm your uncle. Do you got any tickets? Relatives who aren't related. <laughs> These guys have one more thing. The game's going to be at home. Harmon again. This is as close, I guess, John, as it's ever been. If you look at Walter Payton, Walter Payton, close as it's ever been to a a home team being a host in a Super Bowl game. Well, I think the other one was when the Rams played in uh, in Pasadena against Pittsburgh. Right. It's the same type of thing. Uh, you know that they have it in there. Uh, Palo Alto is only about five uh, five miles from Red Redwood City, where the 49ers train. That's really home. They can walk to work that day. I doubt they will, but they could. Second down. Kavanaugh gets to Harmon again. He swings around the right side or tries to, and the Bears are out there to knock him down. Single Terry. He doesn't know they're down 20 to nothing. Up. He plays the same way all the time. Do you see number 62, Guy McIntyre, was leading on that play. Well, he's playing guard now. Earlier in the game, we saw him a couple times. In fact, one big touchdown where he was in the backfield. Remember that? Here's, here's the play to Wendell Tyler, but here's Guy McIntyre, the guard. They call this formation Angus. Angus formation. Got the big bull in front. Kavanaugh back to throw under Brent Harmon. It's complete. But he's hit down quickly by Dewerson. Tonight on CBS, 60 Minutes, Murder, She Wrote, Crazy Like a Fox, 
Trapper John, MD. Bill Walsh should have a, a, a series on some one of these nights called Genius Like a Fox. And there he is. Or how to do surgery, she wrote. Two-minute warning. 49ers, 20 to nothing over the Bears. And headed for Super Bowl 19. comes to getting to the high ground, there's nothing like having a faithful companion. The new Toyota 4x4 SR5 Extra Cab, powering you to the top with a new electronically fuel-injected engine that supplies this truck with more horsepower than any other in its class. The new Toyota 4x4. Now, this is a friend forever. Did you hear AT&T has introduced something rather radical? The Reach Out America plan. Calling anywhere in the United States weekends or nights is just $10 an hour. The next is even less. So you can see how far your money goes. Quite ingenious, really. They even have a number for ordering. 1-800-551-3131. Reach Out America. They may be on to something. AT&T. The more you hear, the better we sound. Sunday, Jack Wharton's a freewheeling private eye. John Rubenstein's his son, a button-down attorney. Heck of a lawyer. And together they solve mysteries. Crazy like a fox. Back at Candlestick, and look at this conference between Bill Walsh and Joe Montana. Well, you know, when you're a coach, you want to get down and look in your quarterback's eyes. So you just, if he's down on one knee, you just get down on one knee like a feet and look right in his eyes. But what they were talking about is whether... They wanted to go for the field goal, and he wanted to hold because Joe Montana is the holder for Ray Worsham. And he got hit in the knee, and he had a tough time getting up. They've decided it's going to be Worsham from 34 yards out with Montana holding. And he rips it up and good. 23 to nothing. The 49ers over the Bears. The last time they met was last year, these two teams in regular season. And the Bears. Hey, there's only one thing better than success, and that's enjoying it. Welcome to Miller Time. It's all yours, and it's all mine. Bring your first December right here. The rich school taste of Miller Beer. Miller Beer. It's what you have in mind. Welcome to Miller Time. Welcome to the rich, smooth taste of Miller High Life. When they put a heavy load on your shoulders, there's nothing like having a friend you can count on. A new Toyota electronically fuel-injected one-ton truck. It'll carry over 2,500 pounds. And with an optional towing package, you can pull up to 5,000 pounds. The Toyota one-ton truck. Thanks, old buddy. Oh, 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 what a Summerall and John Madden were at Candlestick Park where the 49ers have died in for the 49ers is that he has a sprained elbow. It's not dislocated and Worshing hammers it high. Dennis Gentry fires out of the end zone, picks it off and gets out to about the 33 before he's cut down by Mike Walter. Speaking of Walters, pay tribute to Walter Payton. Tire. The Angus back talking to Bill Walsh. Something he put in that had to come as a surprise to everybody. You know, it's something a coach does. You put that in and you've never done it before, so you don't know if it's going to work. And then after it does work, then you feel as good as the guy did that made it work. The Bears, Steve Fuller. Is chased again by Johnson. Johnson's cut away, cut down. And the ball bounces off the intended receiver, Todd Shell. Ed DiBartolo, Jr., who owns the 49ers. Yeah. They got two weeks to sell 
Montgomery. They're going to play Miami. You better watch out because he's going to get his back padded a lot. He's going to be asked for a lot of tickets. And then the other thing is going to cost him a lot of money. That's probably what he's, he'll think about tonight. As you know, the more you win, the more money it costs. Because all these guys want raises, renegotiate, a lot of words like that. But then on the other hand, the more you win, the more money you got. And if you're a guy like Eddie DeBartolo Jr., maybe it's all worth it. 145 left to play. Fuller on the screen pass gets it to Stewie. Stewie is chased and hammered down. Ricky Ellison again. Ronnie Lott again. Seven-yard gain. Ricky Ellison is another one of those impressive guys. He has that look in his eyes. You know, we always talk about linebackers and look in their eyes and stuff like that. Ricky Ellison has that look in his eyes. Penalty markers down downfield as Fuller comes out. He's hit by number 50, Ricky Ellison, who led the team in tackles this year, calls the defensive fronts. Flags are down. men on the field defense penalty decline first down guys are trying to get their time now for their letterman's uh, jacket you know, so they just run on the field so they can say that they play you know and then they get a little dirty and walk off maybe some guy in the, from the press will talk to him were you in oh yeah i was in there really really a lot of hard hitting going on in there some of them might have bonuses for time played or something like that that's right. If they need some more time, they need another minute, so they just run in here. There's Ricky Ellison. He needs a New Jersey. No, oh, that's good. That's the way it should be. You should have torn jersey. Little dirt. This thing is getting too, too plastic. Fuller got loose. He hits Dunsmore finally, and Dunsmore is cut down by Dana McLemore and Ricky Ellison one more time jumped on top. Less than a minute left to play. The 49ers 23. The Chicago Bears nothing. Timeout. Bears. Next weekend on CBS Sports Saturday. 15 rounds. The IBF World Lightweight Championship between Harry Arroyo and Terrence Ali. And I know you respect both of those fighters, John. That's going to be a good one. You know, Harry Arroyo is from the same town as Boom Boom Mancini, and some people are saying that... And Terrence Ali is a fine fighter. I've liked him for a long time. And then also next weekend on Sports Saturday, great pool shootout, trick shots, and the Super Bowl preview with those two bandits, Summerall and Madden, live at 4 o'clock Eastern Time, and Sunday... The World Triathlon Championship and the All Madden team. A lot of those guys won't go to the Pro Bowl, but they'd rather be on that team. If they want to be on the team, they can be. Don't forget, following football, except on the West Coast, 60 minutes will be headed your way. And on the West Coast, it'll be seen at its regular time. 59 seconds left to play. The Bears, sad, but it's been since 1963 since they've been this far. In fact, the Bears, until today, had never been in a playoff game in January. And that's a real tribute to the job that they've done, the job Mike Dick and his staff have done. Fuller gets it out to Peyton, no matter what the score. You know, he's still playing and getting up in a hurry. Todd Shell out there to knock him down. You know, talking about congratulations, I think we ought to congratulate Miami Dolphins too because Absolutely. They're, they're going to be right out here with those 49ers in a couple weeks. They'll test that defense a little bit. Pretty tough to pitch a shutout against them. Handoff to Walter Payton. Payton hammers down inside the 35. Todd Shell again on the stop. First down, Bears 13 yards for Walter. 25 seconds left to play. Timeout Bears gives us a chance to say thank you. Sincerely thank you to people like our executive producer Terry O'Neill and our senior producer Charles H. Milton III and to the director Sandy Grossman to the associate producer Joan Petrano to the replay directors to Brooks Graham, Jim Ripple 
to associates Lance Barrow, Pierce O'Neill, and the rest of Lance's crew. To our statistician, as well as the cameraman, Mike Swanson. To our spotter, Mark Barrow. To all of those people, John. They make it easy, don't they? I'll tell you, they sure do, and they they do such a great job, not only today, but but all year. And it's one of the things that makes these games fun. You know, we we go and we and we come here in the weekends. We all get together. It's just fun to be together with all these type of people and the professionalism that they have. And and you know, if it weren't fun, it wouldn't be worth it. That's true. And we really all have one one objective. Like they want to win, they're laughing. We want to be there for the finals, too. And we want to do the best we can for those who watch. Not just us. Fuller back to throw. Scrambling around. Chased. Caught by Jim Stuckey. A long day for Steve Fuller, but you have to admire his courage and how he's hung in there. After two shoulder separations in the course of one year. Mike Ditka, a lot of pressure this week, a lot of questions being asked, but he never lost his sense of humor. Don Shula. I'll tell you, you know, you talk about good players, and you talk about good coaches. There's one of the greatest that ever coaches can, Don Shula. I'll tell you, he, he is not only an amazing coach, he's an amazing man. saw a minute ago will be on the post game show talking about uh, what the next two weeks will bring and perhaps an evaluation of the 49ers they're starting the Super Bowl hype already on the sideline Pat they got cameramen surrounding Joe Montana they're trying to get interviews down there before the game's over look at that gang of guys yeah the press day for the Super Bowl is supposed to be a week from Tuesday has to get the jump teams with the two best records in pro football. That's as it should be. Fuller again has to run. Throws. They say no, no. Dunsmore was the intended receiver. Ten seconds. Penalty marker down. Past the line of scrimmage was Fuller. He didn't want to run, not because he didn't want to run, but that's not the way to put a point up there at this time. I don't always understand these timeouts at the end when you're down to a few seconds, you're down 23 to nothing. Offense, loss of down. But I guess it has to be done. Well, you know, it's Mike Ditka's personality. It's Walt, Walter Payton's personality. Let's... Let's, let's play the full 60 minutes. I'll tell you, Mike is doing that. He's still sending plays in. It was some good spitting. But I'll tell you, I'm sure he'll hang his head high, I and mean, he's going to yeah. keep that thing up. Well, that gum he's got has really taken a beating today. Fans starting to spill out of the end, end zone stands now, headed for the field. Here's Peyton. He's still going. Flag is down as Peyton swings to the outside and hammers somebody. Has knocked out of bounds on the far side of the field. Here come fans onto the field. Clock still shows two seconds. The game can't end on a defensive penalty. And those cops and those horses aren't doing a very good job of keeping these fans off. Still two seconds on the clock. They call the delay of the game Over. penalty. It's over. They say it's over. And that's a wise choice, a wise decision. For the safety of everyone, look at this play. San Francisco 23, 